Hi, and a very warm welcome to this Qualibrate Automation Platform demo. My name is Steven, and in this demo session, we're going to be looking at Qualibrate for SEPS for transformation programs. Now, one of the biggest challenges facing customers on SEPS for transformation programs is to end up with a high quality SAP system in production as fast as possible. And in order to achieve that, there's a number of quality assets that have to be created throughout the project lifecycle. And traditionally, these are done in a sequential way. So at the start of your transformation program, you normally embark on some business process documentation exercise. Could be the case that you're looking to move, uh, you're looking to move back to SAP standard processes, or you're looking to optimize your business processes. And this activity is normally done by business analysts. It's normally at a high level, so it doesn't usually include the detailed steps that are required to be executed within the SAP system, but rather a high-level overview of how the processes work end-to-end -end within the organization. Now, in order to document that, there's a number of different approaches. Some customers would use a business process modeling tool. Maybe you're using the SAP Solution Manager Blueprint, or you might even just be using a business process master list in Excel. Now, once you have this high-level business process documentation, you need to create manual test cases, which will actually detail the steps that need to be performed in the application to basically validate that it's built to a uh, purpose. Now, the, the manual test cases will include all the steps within SAP, including data, the, the role, and expected result of executing that process. Um, that, this activity is more functional, so it's typically done by key users, or maybe you've got dedicated manual testers or functional experts specifically for this activity. And, this again could be done in Excel or in Word, or maybe you're a little bit more mature and you're actually using a dedicated manual testing tool. Once you've got your manual test cases in, in place, what we see is customers looking more and more to embrace automation. Uh, whether it's you want to release more functionality more frequently into production so that you have a, a, an advantage over competitors, or even if you just want to uh, embrace modern software de development techniques like DevOps or CI CD. The idea here is to create an, an automated set of tests that can be run on demand. So you can run them overnight or at the weekend. And typically, if you're doing a rollout, you would cover your template processes. And every time you rolled out, you would execute these to make sure that the template processes were still working. Now, test automation typically requires a different skill set, maybe more technical resources who know coding or scripting. And usually, you would have a dedicated test automation tool for that. And finally, before you put your uh, system into production, you need to make sure that your end users from day one are able to understand and use the system as expected. And again, if you're going back to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, optimize your processes or moving back to SAP standard, it's very important that you have guides and walkthroughs for your end users so that you can start, uh, let's say, uh, using the system straight away. Now, if we think about a, a standard sales order process in SAP, if you think about uh, documenting that or creating a test case, manual or automated or even training, you're actually describing the same thing. And very often is the case in, in these organizations when there is different steps and different users involved and potentially for even different tools for these different activities, a lot of the time the change management per process becomes a huge overhead and the documentation or the test cases or the automated scripts or the training material gets out of date. So you end up running automated tests and, and, and then failing, but for the wrong reasons, or your end users are unable to learn the system because the training material is out of date. And that's exactly the, 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 the problem that Qualibrate is, is solving. So with Qualibrate, the idea is that at the start of your SAP transformation program, what we like to do is give the right tools to the right people. And what we mean by that is with someone who knows the steps that need to be performed in SAP application, with one step, they can output business process documentation, manual test cases, automated test scripts, and training material. And what a lot of customers forget is that during the implementation phase, you have to do this activity. But once you go into production, once you're running in maintenance, you're also going to introduce change to your application. There's going to be bug fixes. There's going to be new functionality, patches, uh, extensions, so on. And every time that you change your application, you have to update your documentation, you have to update your test cases, you have to update your automated scripts, and you have to update your training material. So the idea with Qualibrate is instead of having four steps, potentially four different people, and maybe even four different tools, and one step with one person, one tool, you can create business process documentation, manual tests, automated scripts, and training material. So let's have a quick look at, at how that actually works. So here I am in my Qualibrate application. I'm going to go to my project. 
when I log in, I'm immediately taken to my dashboards. But there's two very important uh, concepts that I want to explain within Qualibrate before we start. The first one is flows, and the second one is scenarios. Now, flows are business processes. You can think about them as reusable building blocks. Let's again take the create sales order process as an example. You might want to execute during a training or a testing cycle a sales order process with different sets of data, different users multiple times. But the actual process is the same. So in the flows section, what we do is we create a digital document for creating a sales order process. And we then use that in an end-to-end -end scenario, for example, order to cash. Now, the idea is that you can run as often as you want with different sets, with different data. But if the process changes, you update the building block or the flow and all the scenarios that use that building block are updated automatically. So it's a kind of modular approach. The idea is to reuse as much as possible and to avoid duplicate work. So in the, the dashboards, you can see that we are reporting on some of these things. You can see we're reporting on the flows, how many times it ran. You can also see who's the owner of the flows, what is the current status of the flows, what is the severity of the flows. We also track defects. So you can see, let's say, uh, defects by who they're assigned to, their status or severity, how many have been created per day. And you can also see uh, execution trends over, a, let's say, a time series. Now, all this information, dashboards can be created on your own. Uh, we have some default ones out of the box but it's basically reporting on the content that we have in the Qualibrate repository. And I'm gonna show how we create that content. So I'm gonna go into my flows. I'm gonna create a new flow. I'm gonna call it S4 uh, create quotation. This is a simple create quotation example. Oh, little spelling mistake. And I'm gonna mark it with a severity of critical. Now this is um, kind of useful if gets to the point where you're coming up to a testing cycle and you initially had four weeks, but because the project slips, you're now down to three or two weeks. What you can do is you can focus your attention on the most important processes first. So kind of take a risk-based approach to executing the, these uh, tests. So I'm gonna save that and I'm basically taken to this blank canvas and just straight away, I'm gonna hit record. And what record's gonna do, it's gonna open this little widget you can see over here. And if we have a quick look at it, you can see there's a few different functionalities. So the first button is save. I can verify things. I can take notes. I can store things. So for example, if I'm creating a sales order, but I want to create that sales order with a reference from a quotation, well, I can create my quotation first. SAP will give me a unique quotation number. I can store that quotation number in a data set or an Excel file. And when I'm creating my sales order process, I can use that quotation number. And then every time I run that scenario, it will automatically create the quotation, grab the unique number and use it to create the sales order. I can also cancel. And here it's asking me to name my task. And you can think about tasks a little bit like um, uh, chapters. So the first chapter I'm going to say is SAP login. And this is just to make it readable for once the recording is finished, to make it easy to understand for anyone who's viewing it. So I'm just going to go to my SAP application. I'm going to click on the, the server I want. I'm going to put in my username. I'm going to put in my password. I'm going to hit enter. And actually, if you see here, uh, Qualibrate is actually doing something in the background. So if I open it up and I scroll back to my first step, the first step was connecting to SAP. So this is a session that I was connecting to. Then I entered in a user. You can see I entered user 11. Now it can take notes. So it might be handy for training to say user 11 is related to sales org 1000. That might be handy for someone who's running a training scenario so that they know that. The next step is to type in my password. By default, the password is encrypted, but I can also change the values here during the recording itself, or I can do it afterwards. And then the next step was to press enter. Okay, so that chapter, the login chapter is completed. Now I'm going to go and create a new chapter called create quotation. I'm gonna to go to PA21. I'm gonna put in my quotation type, my sales org, distribution channel, division, press enter will take me to the next screen. Once I get to the next screen, I'm gonna put in my sold to party, I'll put in my ship to party. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just gonna go in and put in a, a delivery date of 21st. I'm gonna choose a material and I'll choose a quantity and I'll press enter. Now, of course, this is a very simple example of walking through a standard great quotation process in SAP. But if I'm doing this as either a training exercise or creating documentation for training, or I'm creating an automated or a manual test, there's maybe some kind of validations that I also want to do in the application. So that's where I'm going to go to my verify button. 
And when I click on verify, then I can home in on different parts of the application. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to verify the net value. And when I open up my Qualbridge widget, you can see that I've verified the net value equals 26,000. Now, that's useful and I can modify that here, but I can also make a configuration. So here you can say that uh, at the moment, we're looking to check that that field contains 26,000. And if we do a real-time evaluation, we can see that that's true. Now I can also say, well, I want to check that it doesn't equal. And if I run that evaluation again, you can see that's false. But actually for our purposes, I want to make sure that that actually is equal to. So I'm going to verify that it's correct. And then I'm going to save. So very simple create quotation example. Now what I'm just going to do is I'm not even going to save it just for this demo. I'm just going to log off. So I'm going to log off my SAP system. And then I'm going to save my recording. And if you go back into Qualibrate, once the recording is saved, what you will see is all the chapters that are being created here. So this is all drag and drop. So if I've made a mistake or if I want to change a step, I can reorder them or I can record from a step. And this is what we refer to as a digital document. So if I look at these chapters in more detail, the first step is connect to SAP. And if I open that up, I can see a screenshot of the SAP session. The next step is to type in a user. I can see the user uh, field is, is kind of highlighted so that I understand not only what this step is doing, but I can see a screenshot with a highlight of the step so that I understand how that actually looks in the application. If I look at my notes, the notes that I've been taking during the recording are there. So if I'm looking at this from a training perspective, I can understand this is related to sales org 1000 for user 11. And the next step is to enter the password and press enter. Now, if I look at my create quotation, first step is to go to transaction BA21, press enter, put in my quotation type, my sales organization, distribution channel, division, press enter, sold to party, ship to party, put in my date, my material, quantity, right up until we do a validation on the net value. So this is kind of what we call digital documentation. It's very handy if, for example, someone who doesn't know the process is new to the organization. Maybe you don't even have access to an SAP environment for them, but they can log in and they can understand what this process is supposed to do. Now, it might be the case that I want to, you know, create a bunch of these and, and run them in an automated way so that every time I make a change, I want to validate that the application is still behaving correctly. So what I'm able to do in Qualibrate is I can just run this automatically using a robot. So I'm just going to say run. And what will actually happen is the automated tester will open up SAP and will basically just execute the steps that I uh, performed when I, when I did the initial recording. So it's entering the division, pressing enter, goes to the sold to party, the ship to party, changes the date, material, the quantity. Then it's going to press enter, do a verification on the net value, and finally log out. And those are useful. Again, maybe you're doing a rollout, so you've got core template processes. You can have a bunch of these. Then you can run them automatically every time there's a change or every time you do a rollout and you can make sure that your template is still behaving as expected. Now, if we have a little bit of a look at the logs, what we can see is that we've got an execution. You can see the name, where it was run, who ran it, how long it executed for. And if I expand this down, what you can see is all the steps in the application. So the first step was to connect to SAP. Then it was to type in the username. You can see the start time, the elapsed time. It was run in an automated way, the data that was used, also the screenshot taken by runtime. And if we scroll down, you can see the password, press enter, basically all the steps were performed and also screenshots captured during the execution. And this can be used for auditing purposes. So you can have these uh, given to auditors. So you can basically say, yeah, we, we did val uh, validate the application was behaving correctly. Here's when we did it. Here's the time. Here's the user, the machine that we ran on. And we can scroll all the way down until we see the final validation on the net value. So that's very handy, especially for, let's say, running automated tests. Now, if we go back and have a look at our, our, our recording, what we can also do is we can also run this in a manual way. And if you think about especially transformation programs or SAP implementations in general, user acceptance testing can sometimes be sneakily used as a training session. Maybe you've run out of time. Maybe you just want to combine it to be more efficient. So what we can also do is we can also run this process in, in a manual way and give instructions to, the, to let's say, the, 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 the tester or the trainer. And we can also guide them through the application. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to execute this manually. I'm going to hit run. And what will happen is here I'll get basically the same view or a, let's say a different view of the same uh, recording. So I've got SAP login, create quotation here, log off. Here you can see the same. If I open this up, you can see the first step is connect to SAP. And it tells me, so if I go into my SAP system, first step is to connect to SAP. You can see I have some buttons here. So pass, fail, skip a step. I'll, I'll come to the other ones. But I'm going to go 
and try and connect. So I've got my instructions of what to do and I can say, well, I was able to do that. So that was a pass. Now, what I can also do is I can say, well, the next step is to type in the username. If maybe it's a new process, maybe there, we've changed the field or there's something new, maybe the username is not the best example. But if I'm struggling as, a, as, as, a, as an end user to, to understand how this process works, I've also got some additional uh, functionality in Collaborate. I can say, can you show me? And I will go into the application and it will highlight the field that I need to interact with. And I can even say, you know what, just do it for me. And it will enter in the value. Now you can see that the color is different. This is because this is run in, in a manual way in, in past, and this one is run in an automated way in past. And that's very important because in the logs, we also specify or we also show that. So you can make sure that if you've got end users training or testing, that they're really just running through the application as they want and doing the proper validations. Now, it could be the case that I'm maybe interested only in the final validation of this process. So I don't really want to run through it manually. I want to go through the application until I get to the net value and do the check manually. So what I can also do is that you can just keep saying, okay, do it for me, enter the password, press enter. So this is kind of like an, an interactive guide. The next step is press SE, go to transaction V21, press enter. Then I can see I have to put in the quotation type. Again, I can go back in, I can say, okay, I'll put in the quotation type and that was successful. I can mark it as a pass. The next step is put in the sales organization, 1000. I can say, well, please show me, I'm not sure. Or I can just say again, do it for me. If it was successful, it will pass. So you can see this is a kind of guide through the application interacting with the SAP uh, session. Now, during user acceptance testing, it's also a chance to look for defects within the application. So let's just assume that I'm going to try and type in the distribution channel and, and, and I'm not able to. What I can also do is I can fail a step and I can also automatically raise a defect. And what that will do is it will open up the Qualbrate application, open up a defect. I can say, hey, this is my defect. And all the steps and data that was, let's say, entered in order to get to that point is automatically saved. And this is very useful because then what I can do is I can go in and assign this to a developer. I can give it a, let's say, a severity. And the developer will get this defect with knowing all about it in terms of severity, what kind of bug it is. So I can say, well, it's a configuration issue. And they also have all the steps required to reproduce the defect. So that's very handy because once they go in and, and make the fix, they can run through those same steps with the same data again, and they can validate it. Or they can just give it to the back to the tester, and they can validate it either manually, or they can run it automated to check that the, te the, the change has been uh, implemented correctly. So I'm just going to close this defect down, go back into my, to my manual test, and I'm just going to shut this one down because we're just doing a demo. So if I go back here, just a quick recap, we've created a digital document so that anyone can log into Qualibrate and they can see how this process works, even without actually, actually accessing the SAP environment. If they want, they can run it in an automated way. They can even run it in a manual way, an interactive way, where it kind of guides them through the application and even does some of the steps for them if they want. Now, this is all driven from data. So if we look at our data sets, here I've got my default set that was created while the recording. And again, you can see all the steps. So I connected to SAP, my user, and my password, what transaction I went to, the quotation type, the sales organization. Now, of course, I can change any information here. So I can change it to 1001 or leave it back at 1000. But what is very handy is if I can also uh, make a duplicate of this. And this one I'm going to call EMEA sales org. Going to save it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it. And I'm going to export it to Excel. And when I open up my Excel file, and let's make it a little bit more readable for everyone. What you can see here is basically the same information. Sorry, I have to do that again. Same information, but in an Excel file. So you can see that I entered in a username, user 11, I entered in a password, I went to VA21, quotation type, sales org 1000, distribution channel 10, division zero. Now, why this is very handy is what I can do is I can make a copy of that row. I can make some new ones and I can say, well, this one is uh, US, this one is Germany, this one is France, this one is UK. I can change the username, maybe different users for different countries, different organization units. I can change the sales organization. So the first one is 1000, second one is 1010, 1020. 1030. 
And this is very handy because instead of having, let's say, the, the, the business having to go into the platform and, and record things on their own, you can record template processes, give the business units an Excel file for them to add their data. You can save it, close it, and then you can re-import it into Qualibrate. And I'm going to upload it. And now when I go and look at my data set for my EMEA sales org, the first iteration is going to run with user 11, the second one with user 12, the third one with user 13, then user 14. First one is going to use sales org 1000, second one is going to use sales org 1010, third one is going to use sales org 1020, etc. So this is very handy because you can decouple the process from the data. You can record your template processes, store them in your Qualibrate repository. And if you're doing a rollout, you can give the business an Excel file that they can fill in with their specific data. And you can just add that to your regression set. That so every time you run the test, you also run it with their data set. Now, the next part of the, the demo we're going to have a quick look at is scenarios. And in scenarios, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scenario and I'm going to call it S4 order to cash, say save. And what I can do with my scenarios is I can just put the flows in a sequence. So my first one was S4 create quotation, the one I recorded. What I can also do is S4, and then I can see my create sales order. I want to do a S4 uh, outbound delivery, and then I'll just do an S4, let's say, invoicing. So basically what I can do with these building blocks is I can put them in a sequence and execute them. And I can also here choose the data set that I want to run. So for example, I want to run a quotation process with the EMEA sales org data first. You can see that I can also run them automated, but it might be the case that if I'm, I'm looking at the order to cash process, but I'm really just interested on manually validating that the invoicing process is working. But in order to get to the invoicing process, I need to go through and create a quotation and create a sales order and do an outbound delivery. So I can run these first three scenarios or these first three flows automatically, but I can also choose to run the last one manually. So that they run up to a certain point and then I can take over as a manual user and do that manual validation if I'm going through a kind of user acceptance testing scenario. That's it for today's demo session. Thank you very much for watching and please visit our website to find out customer testimonials or to find out more information and feel free to contact us if you're interested to get started on your Qualbridge journey. Thanks.